Uh, today, the video blog, January 5th, and January 5th is a special day for me. It's the anniversary of my uh, father passing away, which was uh, very important to me. Um, not that it was important that he passed away, but in honor of him, because uh, he was a great guy. And uh, it's also the anniversary of my uh, wedding to my wife. Uh, who else would I have been married to? Or who else would I have been wed to? But, um, so, you know, which is kind of interesting because it turns out that, um, uh, I didn't even remember that my dad was, uh, had passed away on January 5th when I got married. And because of the, uh, because we got married in Vegas and it could have been, uh, by the time we got married, it was already the next day. And the guy said, do you want to be married on the 5th or the 6th? And I said, or the 4th and the 5th, I forget which. <clears throat> I said, I want to be married on the 5th. And, uh, he said, okay. And then it turned out, my mom told me later, that uh, the 5th was actually the day my dad passed away. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like, you know, it's like a sad thing and then a happy thing. You know what I mean? Like uh, sort of an, a homage to him. And then, of course, I have it written down right here so I don't forget it. See, it says January 5th. Well, actually, it says 5th of January 2007 because uh, that's military, uh, how you write things. Also in Europe, and since my wife grew up in Holland, that's, uh, you know, how she does it. All right, so the um, stand-up tour I went on last week was amazing. Um, Bob Levy is absolutely one of the funniest stand-up comedians I've ever fucking seen. Uh, his ability to work a crowd is second to none. He's touring with uh, Jim Norton, Artie Lang, um, and Jim Norton says he won't. Um, Jim Norton refuses to follow him. Artie Lang says that he that Bob Levy should be the headliner instead of him. I mean, that's high praise. Um, the guy is out and out amazing. I mean, even you, New Year's Eve, the crowd was kind of crappy uh, as far as being energetic. And uh, I was like, man, he's never going to get this crowd rocking. And he had them so rocking. It was like they had a thou like they had 10,000 people there. Um, anybody who didn't see it, shame on you for not coming um, because you should have came. Uh, it was a really good show all three nights. It was my second, third, and fourth stand-up gigs ever. And I killed. I was awesome. I rocked. I rocked the monkey wrench. No, actually, I, re I really was really good. Um, had to bring my uh, notepad up on stage. Not my notepad, but just my uh, just my order. Just not even my order, but just my bits. Because I couldn't remember all my bits. Because I had so many bits. New bits, old bits, fresh bits. Uh, all kinds of bits. Um, and now, wouldn't you like to hear some? That's too fucking bad. You should have came to the show. Um... You could have taken a unicycle, you could have taken the trolley, you could have taken a, 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 a scooter, you could have taken a train, you could have taken a bus, a plane, you could have uh, got a jet pack if you know anybody at, uh, eight, at uh, you know, at Bell Laboratories or somewhere. But no, you didn't come, you little bastards, you didn't come. The turnout should have been a lot better, shame on you, turnout should have been a lot, lot better. Um, still was good, I still made a lot of money, which is really what's important, and oops. And it's uh, and I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot. Um, I really learned a lot. Uh, I mean, how can you not working with Bob? And so, uh, see, and since uh, in case you forgot, his name's Bob Levy. My real name, last name is Levy. So we were known as the Levy World Order, and we're all out of Levy World Order shirts. Actually, if you want to get some of them, you got to go to Bob Levy's uh, website, uh, which I forget what it is. How, how great is that of me to plug it? What is it? What is it? It's RevBobLevy.com if you want your LWO shirt. Or we also were selling these shirts. We have two left. Two. Two. Uh, one of each. And uh, see, can you see that? Let's see. It says, quote the raven nevermore. Uh, yes, quote is spelled Q-U-O-T-H. That's how it's spelled. It's not spelled Q-U-O-T-E. I usually spell it Q-U-O-T-E because I hate when people go, it's spelled, uh, it's not even... But I get tired of people going to me, you know, it's really Q-U-O-T-H. And I know it is, but I just assume people wouldn't know that. And I think half the people would and half the people wouldn't. So I will let uh, you two folks or sets of people battle it out. Handle it, handle it. All right, so we have one of these. And then we have uh, one of these. <clears throat> Wait, where is it? And these uh, were the only two left. Uh, and we're going to auction those off on eBay tonight. Uh, see, there's that one that says Nevermore with wings on the back, or wings on the front, actually. Um, and they're long sleeve. See, cool, huh? They're purple with long sleeve. Uh, one size fits all, which means it's an extra large. Um, and, uh, 
they're going to be auctioned. So we'll probably start the bidding nice and cheap at like uh, five bucks and, you know, let the bidding go and uh, bid early and often. Um, those are the last two left, like I said. So we'll start them at five bucks. Um, the, uh, yeah, I was amazed. I was amazed how funny Bob Levy is. I mean, I know he's a funny guy, but I was amazed his ability to work the crowd. Um, it is mind boggling. And I had a really good time. And, um, you know, hopefully people will turn out for the next set of uh, tours because we're not done. We're going to continue to tour and then we're going to continue to do this. And then until we get our own TV shows and movies and, uh, you know, it's going to go on. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Um, uh, what else I want to talk about? Um, Oh, King Curtis had passed away uh, just recently, uh, and, and the reason I bring that up is it's not that I was close to him, because I really, I didn't even know the guy. Um, as a matter of fact, I never even met the guy, but when I was a kid, though, in my formative years, um, like around 1972, when I was in my formative years, um, and I was a big fan of Chief J. Strongbow, who was my favorite good guy or baby face ever as a kid, um, but uh, my, the villains that were there were they had King Curtis... Moondog Maine, Professor Toru Tanaka, and Mr. Fuji. And what I miss today, one of the things I miss about wrestling, I mean, there's so many things I miss about wrestling. You know, and there's a lot of things I like if, if I actually watched it. But there's, there's so many things I miss about it. Um, and one of them is the fact that uh, it used to have, like, a cool sideshow effect. Like, I remember, like, Moondog Maine and King Curtis, they'd come out and they'd eat live goldfish. They'd go... <laughs> And sure, the goldfish could have been not really alive, but they, it still would have been like freshly, un, freshly killed because they, and maybe they were just wiggling it, making it look like it was alive. It's alive, but it doesn't really matter because it's still, you know, it's still a goldfish. It's not like it was cooked up nice in a, you know, it's not like, uh, he was going to regurgitate it. And then they would take glasses and they would just, and they break glass and chew in the glass with their teeth. And then they'd swallow it. I don't know if they actually swallowed a glass, but it was pretty creepy. And then, um, and then Professor Toru Tanaka would break cement cinder blocks with his head. And that was awesome. And, you know, maybe it was a work. Maybe it wasn't. I don't really care, but it was cool. You know, and I, I like that sideshow a aspect of wrestling, but only when it organically fits in. You know, just to throw sideshow crap in for no reason doesn't really work for me. But when it actually fits in because of the characters, uh, and that's what they would do, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, also starting, uh, today's Wednesday, uh, I don't know when you'll watch this, you may watch this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I don't know when you'll watch it, but I started also doing a regular radio show every Wednesday, although I didn't do it last Wednesday because of the comedy tour, and that's on Retro Radio Live, um, and, uh, started my, with my buddy's Eric's show, my buddy Eric's show, and it's a really, really great show, and you need to find it on your, uh, internet dial somewhere, um, and, uh, it does huge ratings, uh. Retro Radio Live, and I come on there and I talk about all my pet peeves of the week. And uh, it's highly entertaining. Uh, and I, a good time is had by all. So, uh, um, let me think. What else? Um, uh, I guess that's it. I had a great time on Christmas and New Year's. Um, Christmas, I was with the relatives, the in-laws. I had a fabulous time with them. What's that? What? I have no idea. My wife yelled something at me. Anyway, I had a fabulous time with the in-laws, and then right from there, I went straight to uh, Philadelphia. Had a great time in Philly. It was all covered with snow. I like the snow. I figure if it's going to be fucking cold, you might as well have some goddamn snow with it, too. Uh, if you're not going to have any snow, then what's the point of being cold? Um, and, uh, and the Mummers Parade. Ah, that's another thing Philadelphia has that nobody else has, is the Mummers Day Parade on New Year's Day. If you've ever been to Philadelphia then you know about it. If you've never been to Philadelphia, you have no idea what a mummer is. And uh, for me to explain it would take a lot of work. So look it up on Wikipedia. But uh, it's pretty cool. I actually almost went this year, but I was too lazy to leave my hotel room in the morning. So I watched it on TV instead. And uh, the commentators were god-awful. Oh, they should have been fired. Actually, I should host the Mummer's Day Parade. I'd be much better at it than they were. But uh, the Mummer's Day Parade is like, uh, uh, they have like, they, I, I can't even explain it. It's pretty cool, though. And the other thing Philly's famous for is pretzels. They're famous pretzels, and uh, and they taste like, uh, I don't know, they taste like the city. You can't get a pretzel anywhere else in the world that tastes like a Philly pretzel. And so, and they have vendors all over the side, like the middle of the street, you know, the side of the street selling them. They have them at the airport. They have them everywhere selling them. And so I always bring a bunch home, and then 
I was fucking pissed. Apparently, New Year's Day is like the only day of the year that they don't sell them. Oh, so I went to, I'm at the airport hunting down the air, hunting down the pretzels, the kiosk for the pretzels because they sell them in a kiosk. And, and the guy's like, no, no, it's down there. The guy sent me to Annie Ann's pretzels, which is not the same thing. They don't taste anything remotely like it. I almost missed my flight. Luckily, it was delayed, so it didn't matter anyway. But still, it pissed me off that I could not bring home any pretzels from Philadelphia. Damn bastards. So I, I order if I had. Now, the cool thing about Philadelphia is the main street of the city, Broad Street, people park their cars in the main, and right down in the, right in the center of the street. Like in, you know, like the main street's like, uh, five lanes, uh, two lanes and two lanes, and then the center lane is like a turn lane. And at night, people just park their car in the center of the lane. It's awesome. That's Philadelphia. It's the greatest town ever. I love it. That's where I'm from. Not Short Hills, New Jersey. Never been to Short Hills, New Jersey until about two years ago. Fucking Bill Apter convinced that I'm from there, and I'd never even been there my entire life. I tell him that every time I see him, and he's like, oh, no, it's good. It's good. Short Hills is good. Oh, you're Meshuggah. Not a Meshuggah. I don't even know what a Meshuggah is. Um, anywho, uh, so I'm from Philadelphia, in case you want to know. That's that. All right, uh, this is 11 minutes and 20 seconds, 21 seconds, 22 seconds. It's getting a little long in the tooth, and I'm starting to ramble, which I never usually do. So it's time to go. Um, so thank you. Don't forget, I'll be auctioning off those shirts. Uh, one last one of each. Here's, here's the one. And then here's the other. Uh, one size fits all. Um, all right. Now, where's that damn off button? Oh, you off button you. I'll find you. Where is it? 